Welcome to Chicago Independent Television, a collection of progressive video reports prepared by grassroots media workers from Chicago and beyond, produced free from corporate or commercial support or influence. I'm Chris Giovannis. In this episode, we'll update you about immigrant rights activist Elvira Ariano, who ended her year-long sanctuary in a Chicago church in defiance of an expulsion order. We'll also learn more about a Chicago FCC hearing on media concentration and the fight to preserve a community garden in Chicago's Pilsen neighborhood. Stay with us. Our economy is in trouble. Our education system is failing. Our cities have become war zones. And our planet is in distress. But instead of reaching out for solutions, we reach for another potato chip and zap another channel. Snap out of it, America. A message from the Media Foundation. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. Elvira Ariano has been a leading voice in the immigrant rights movement since she took sanctuary in a local church over a year ago. She recently decided to leave the church and tour the United States to speak out and organize, a campaign that resulted in her arrest and deportation on September 19, 2007. What follows is a two-part report on her current situation and the broader immigrant rights movement. I think the story of Alvira starts in 2001, December 15, 2001, where she's arrested at O'Hare Airport uh, working with a false social security number. Um, she's processed and released, and at that point, and it's something she says quite often, uh, she begins to find a sense of outrage at the way undocumented workers and immigrants are treated in the United States. Um, those who are forced to migrate from their native lands in search of a job. Uh, the sheer demographics imply that by 2049, uh, this is a quote from Time magazine, very often quoted since it came out two, two or three years ago, by 2049 Hispanics will make up the majority of the population in the U.S. Uh, and I think it has a number of cons a serious consequences of implications. First and foremost, for lawmakers in the U.S., how do we deal with a system of immigration that's broken? So Elvira steps into a situation where she becomes at once both a victim and a protagonist in the struggle to change this broken system. Elvira becomes, and I think the process of being arrested and the struggle that she's gone through up to August 15th, 2006, when she takes the, she makes the momentous decision to enter sanctuary in Al Alberto United Methodist Church is a transformative one. It's one where little by little she gets a sense not only of herself in the micro, becoming a leader, starting to talk about with a sense of conscience what is wrong with this situation and what needs to be fixed, but also develops a sense at the macro level. Uh, looking at things at a societal level, how the different laws and economics interact with each other. Uh, so that on August 15th, by the time she makes the decision to enter sanctuary, she's already a leader. She's the president of La Familia Unida, uh, which is an organization that she co-founds and is made up of families of immigrants and un undocumented advocates who either have been arrested or are in the process of being deported. Um, for a while, I think their pundits call her the queen of the undocumented. Uh, that doesn't last too long because in the process, along with her son, Saul Arellano, who's seven at the time and turns eight in sanctuary, she rapidly becomes someone to be listened to on the issue of immigrant reform, immigration law reform. The Time magazine article, I think it was approximately six months ago, uh, named Elvira said one of the most important contributions Elvira had made to the immigration debate, regardless of whether or not you agreed with her or disagreed with her, was that she had put a human face on the immigration debate. And if you deconstruct the sentence, it's saying that you can't treat these people as numbers, that there's a huge amount of families that are about to be dislocated. And I say that, I'm no fan of hyperbole, I would say that an estimate between 12 and 15 million people are on the verge of being racially dislocated. That's the largest dislocation, largest mass dislocation in the history of this country. Uh, 
You're watching Chicago Independent Television. I see the soul of a nation. Must be true because I've seen it on TV. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. And now for part two on our story on Elvira Iriano and the immigrant rights movement. And when it became clear that the Department of Homeland Security was moving with very uh, draconian speed uh, to increase uh, the level of raids and deportation, separation of families, and nomad sanctions going after 16 million people who were working here with. Uh, papers that do not match. Uh, uh, she said, I can't just stay in sanctuary with my son when there are millions of U.S. children like Saul and millions of mothers like me uh, who are going to face the destruction of their lives uh, over the next three years. So she made a determination to leave sanctuary and she intended to go to Washington, D.C. on September the 12th uh, and bring her case uh, uh, in prayer uh, in front of Congress to ask them to act in September. Uh, the first leg of that journey was to California where she spoke in about eight different churches uh, and then on the way from uh, the last church she was at and to another church uh, we were surrounded by uh, uh, about uh, eight ICE vans uh, and about some 20 ICE agents uh, surrounded the car, armed agents. Uh, and uh, uh, arrested her. Uh, she was then quickly uh, deported. Uh, that is, she was taken from Los Angeles uh, to Tijuana, uh, where she was uh, turned over uh, to Mexican authorities across the border, and, uh, and then she was free. Uh, Salito is uh, temporarily with us because when they arrest somebody in these kind of cases, uh, they make no provisions for the children or for the reunification of the families. Uh, so we've had Salito with us. Uh, we're going to take Salito to her in Mexico uh, this weekend uh, so that they can be together. Uh, the, uh, it's a continuing fight. Uh, she has said she will not come back to this country until she can come back in a legal manner. Uh, Salito obviously wants to be here. This is the only country he's ever known. He's a U.S. citizen. He has rights here, uh, but he's not going to be here without his mother. Uh, so we're going to continue for fight for his right to have to be here and to have his mother here with him. But most importantly, uh, Elvira's, uh, the, the first two of her objectives have been met. Uh, she took a very uh, high risk and dangerous position. She could have faced 20 years in prison. Uh, they were obviously too afraid of her to try to prosecute her, and that's why they sent her to Mexico, because she has too much support. Uh, but she faced that danger uh, in order, uh, one, to get the Congress to reopen the debate when the leadership had said that they would not reopen the debate. Uh, we were very uh, pleased that because of her action and all the outcry that's been about it, the Democratic leadership has uh, agreed to begin to hold hearings. Uh, Two, her objective was to re-energize the movement, which had become discouraged and in some way had become divided because of different approaches to the legislation that was in Congress. Uh, we were very uh, pleased to say that, uh, that in every city across this country, factions have come together. Uh, the, um, in many places, they're, they're calling uh, their new coalitions. Uh, the We Are All Elvira Ariano uh, coalitions. Obviously, the third and most important objective is that Congress really act and take responsibility uh, for the mess that it caused and stop living in a world of political cowardice uh, 
that comes from always thinking about what's the best thing to do in terms of the next election for this candidate or that candidate and do the right thing. Take the responsibility that we've maintained a system of undocumented labor in this country uh, for 20 years that we, and that we have to take responsibility for the families that were formed here and the children that were born here. So in the last week, I can tell you the Reverend Coleman, Emma Lozano, and Saul Adriano have visited Boston. Uh, the day after they went to D.C. to testify about the DREAM Act. Um, they also went to New York where in City Hall chambers they had an amazing press conference where between 10 and 15 not only city but municipal and state officials stood with uh, Saul and proclaimed their support not only for Saul and Elvira but to try to reform a broken immigration uh, system. And I think that was the most important. One of them, one of the lawmakers, uh, Iran Monserrate, city councilman, challenged not the Republicans, but the Democrats to take this issue up again in a serious way. And I believe that what comes out of this is that people start talking about what they can do again. Sure, there's a legislative side, but how do you get people involved at the grassroots level? And I think that's what this is aimed at. Again, I think that the solution about a clear road to citizenship or a clear path uh, has to be negotiated down the road. What Elvira and what the, the, the organizations behind the call for September 12th are asking for is obviously a safe harbor for immigrant parents with U.S. citizen children. Uh, they're asking for a stop, a moratorium on the raids and the deportation and the separation of families. I'm Andy Thayer, and you're watching Chicago Independent Television. Tired of peace, prosperity, and a clean environment? Ready to lose millions of those bothersome jobs? Want to get your children out of the house and into Iraq? Too many freedoms and opportunities keeping you up at night? Think the rich just aren't rich enough? Then call for my free presidential misinfotapes now. These misinfotapes are guaranteed to get you off course and keep you divided. Call 800 Bush Industries. We have an entire cabinet standing by to bankrupt your nation and serve every corporate interest. Call 800 Bush Industries today.